Hello, YouTube. This is Marcus at Find Truth 88, and tonight I would like to share a quick video with you. And I've got a question. How do you discern the difference between false prophets and false teachers, false dreams and visions, false prophetic words? Well, of course, we do that by getting and staying rooted in the Word of God. Uh, Hebrews 4.12 tells us that the Word of God is a discerner of spirits. So when we get rooted in God's Word, we get rooted in the truth. And then we're, we're able to recognize a lie. Okay, so there is no replacement for the Word of God. Uh, many give dreams and visions. Many give prophetic words and are not even rooted themselves in the Word of God. But they claim that they, 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 they have heard from the Lord. They, they hear the Lord speak to them, but yet you don't hear them share many scriptures. There is no replacement for getting and staying in the Word of God. It's like in Matthew chapter 7, uh, when Jesus gave the difference between the, the builder who built his house on the rock versus the builder who built his house on the sand. If you rely and trust in dreams and visions and prophetic words, and you're not rooted in the word, then your house is built on the sand. And when the storm comes, and it will, the storms of life will come, then you will be blown over because there's no backbone to your faith. There's only one place to get backbone in your faith, and that's the Word of God. That's the only place. John 1.14 tells us that the Word of God dwelt among us and was made flesh. Well, we know that's Jesus. Jesus is the Word made flesh. Jesus is the living Word. And again, Hebrews 4.12 tells us the Word of God is alive, quick, and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. So we have to stay rooted and founded in the Word of God. Uh, Ephesians 3, 16 through 21 talks about us uh, growing our roots in the love of Christ. So the Word of God is our foundation. The Word of God is our rock. The Word of God is our soil where we find nutrients for our spirit man. Not dreams and visions, not prophetic words. Dreams and visions and prophetic words are biblical but again, without the word of God, without being rooted in the word of God, rooted in the word of truth, you won't be able to discern when you're being deceived or not, if you're not rooted in the word of God. And in Matthew 24, the first warning, this is after the disciples asked Jesus what would be the sign of the end times. The first warning Jesus gave was, take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am anointed, I am Christ. And again here in uh, Matthew chapter 15, the first thing Jesus says here, uh, beware of false prophets. Uh, chapter 7, verse 15, beware of false prophets that come to you dressed as sheep, but inwardly they are raving wolves. See, there are many amongst the flock that act like they're Christians. They talk like they're Christians. They look like they're Christians. They smile like they're Christians. They say hallelujah and praise the Lord, but inwardly. You know, in verse 20 of uh, Matthew chapter 7, he says, Wherefore, you shall know them by their fruits. By their fruits. So we have to be people of the word of God. That is the that is the place that we're going to get our foundation, our, our roots. Our, that's the only place we're going to get our backbone is in the word of God. Not in dreams and visions, not in prophetic words. There's a place for dreams and visions and prophetic words. But unfortunately, many are forsaking the Word of God and trusting in dreams and visions versus trusting in the Word of God. We must stay in His Word. We must continue to pray, and we must have a personal relationship with Him and not trust every wind of doctrine that comes floating out there, just as Ephesians 4.14 tells us. Now, I'll end this video with this thought. After Jesus' resurrection and before He ascended to the, back, to, back into heaven, 500, he gave a command. He says, go to the upper room and wait for the Holy Spirit to come up on you. He gave that command to 500. Just 10 days later, only 120 showed up. That means 380, it was just a, a party to them, a thrill up their leg, because they said, oh, no, no, we're, we're too busy. I mean, they disobeyed the living God. They saw Jesus with their own eyes. And they disobeyed him just 10 days after the command. So my question is you, to you is, what kind of Christian are you? Are you part of the 120? Or are you part of the 380? That's my video tonight.
Until next time, God bless you and good night.